Hi. Now, in the second part of this question, we've got to calculate the momentum lost by Q when it reaches the surface. And what I've got here is the solution to the very first part, which I did in an earlier video. So what we'll do is I'll just put this answer for the tension as 4.9. We'll just put it up here. OK, so if you'd like to have a go at this, I'll give you a moment to pause the video. Do come back when ready and you can check your work solution against mine. Okay, welcome back if you had a go. So if we're to calculate the momentum lost by Q when it reaches the surface, then momentum is equal to the mass times the velocity. Well, first of all, I don't know the mass of Q, so I'm going to need to get that value of M. And to do this, I need to think about resolving on Q. In other words, applying Newton's second law, force equals mass times acceleration. So let's start by considering Q. OK, let's just mark this in as consider Q. And if we consider Q's motion by resolving vertically downwards, what have we got? Well, we've got all of mg, OK, mg minus the tension upwards. That's my resultant force on Q equals the mass, which is M, times the acceleration, A. And if I start to fill in some of my values here, I've got M times G. G will take us 9.8. And then minus the tension. The tension we worked out in the first part, it was 4.9 newtons, so it's going to be minus 4.9, is equal to m multiplied by a, and a was 2.45, so just put that in as 2.45. So if I rearrange this, let's say we subtract 2.45m from both sides and add 4.9 to both sides. So therefore, I've got 9.8m therefore 9.8m minus 2.45m must equal 4.9. And if I subtract 2.45m from 9.8m, I end up with 7.35m. And that equals 4.9. All I need to do is now divide both sides by 7.35. So I get M equals 4.9 divided by 7.35. And that comes to exactly 2 thirds. So M equals 2 thirds of a kilogram. OK, so now I've got my mass of Q. So as Q falls to the surface here, it's going to fall, say, a height h. Let's just mark that in here as being h. OK, so there's h. And we're out to find the speed that it hits the surface, just before it hits the surface there. Let's call that v. Now, its initial speed here was zero, OK, because it started from rest. So what I need to do is work out from a constant acceleration equation what V is. So I need to build up one of those equations. So what we'll do is we'll just have a margin down here, OK, and we'll take downwards as being positive. So Building up a SUVAT-based equation, S for displacement, U the initial velocity, V the final velocity, A the acceleration, and T the time. What do I know? Well, S is going to be equal to H. U is 0. It started from rest. V we're trying to find. And the acceleration, A, is 2.45. And we know the time it took to go from here to here. It was 
0.3 seconds. Okay, so t equals 0.3. So what equation can we use to work out what v is? Well, we don't want one that's got s in because we don't know s. So I'm going to use v equals u plus at. So therefore, v must be equal to u, which is 0. So I'll just leave that out. And then it's just a times t. So it's 2.45 multiplied by t, which is 0.3. And if you work that out, you end up with v equaling 0.735. And that'll be measured in meters per second. So we've got the speed now that it just hits the uh, surface at. But then it's going to come to instantaneous rest. So when it comes to the momentum lost, we'll put this in as the intro, the momentum lost, it's just going to be equal to this momentum minus, well when it's stationary there's no momentum, so therefore it's just m times v. m was two thirds and v we've just seen is 0.735. So if you work that out, 2 thirds times 0.735, you get exactly 0.49. And the units, I'm going to say, are Newton seconds. You could have mass times velocity as the units. In other words, it would be kilograms, meters per second. But I prefer Newton seconds, okay? Another alternative unit. Okay, well, I hope you've been able to follow my workings here. And if you got it right, that's brilliant. Well done.